Special Sunday's radio show. I am your host, Miss Special, here with Nick Boogie. Somebody that I super look up to, super respect, inspiring, great tapes that I can listen to all day. Just you're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. So, I do college radio. You started on college radio at John Carroll University. What was it like doing college radio then? It was the best time of my life. Nice. Like, you know, it was my entry into the world of DJing. Mm-hmm. It was my entry into the world of radio and networking and building relationships. And, you know, I think actually music was better than, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an old, True. bitter guy now. <laughs> so, I, you know. And it was before the digital age, which obviously I'm happy to use now and take advantage. And mm-hmm. it's extended my career years and years and years. But Definitely. there was something to be said for digging up the vinyl back in those days and finding like that rare record yeah. that nobody had and premiering new music on your show, mm-hmm. pre-blogs, pre-everything. So, you know, it, it served a very important place in my life. And it was it's really laid the foundation for my whole career. And then did you end up getting a degree from there, or did you bounce out before? Uh, Two of them, actually. I I got a marketing degree, and I went back and got a master's. Very, very nice. That's impressive. Good stuff. (laughs) It it pays off, though. It's all good. And then, of course, you were the DJ for the Cavaliers. What was that like? Well, I'm originally from Ohio. I live in Mm -hmm. Brooklyn now in New York. I've been there four or five years, Mm -hmm. so... You know, that changed my life in a multitude of great positive ways. But before I moved, yeah, um, I did that. It was awesome. I mean, I love basketball. It's my favorite sport and love DJing. So to be able to combine those uh, was, was a really fun experience. Do you still follow the team? Yeah, yeah. I'm still a Cavs fan. I, I actually grew up a Celtics fan. <laughs> and now that I'm in Brooklyn, I'm a Nets fan because New Jersey's moving over there. So yeah. it's uh, those are my three teams. Nice. Good stuff. And then... So how do you choose the artists that you feature on your mixtapes? Um, it really depends, you know. It's, is it something I like? Is it something I'm feeling? Sometimes is it buzzworthy? Is it going to get a lot of attention? Sometimes it's an economic decision as well, you know. Like, it, it, you know, I just try to balance it out. Like, I do a lot of projects that are work for hire, but I do a lot of projects just because I woke up one night in the middle of the night and I couldn't sleep and I just thought of something cool and I just rushed it and put it out, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, as long as you balance it out, you know, I think you you can win. I love that so much. So what is the process like when you're getting ready to build the mixtape? Because I feel like you do a lot of research and a lot of, like, digging. So what's that like for you? Um, I I mean, again, it's this project by project Mm -hmm. thing, you know? Uh, I just try to find ways to make, you know, mixtapes make sense and tell a story and mixtapes don't have to be mixed per se anymore you know they just have to I look at them as like albums but they're just free you know and you just gotta find a way to make it make sense so if two songs make sense next to each other and you can find a little bit of dialogue or a movie clip or an interview clip or something you could play between them to tie them in that to me is more exciting than you know making two records that should never have to mix mix just for the sake of mixing and then so there's Different tidbits that I want to know where you got them. On the Jay-Z and Pharrell on the Fuck All Night, where did you get that Jay-Z intro from? Where he introduces Pharrell and was like, you know, this man is producing all the songs out right oh, now. Wow, you're asking me all this. is, You know, you're like um, a cooler, you're like Nardwar. <laughs> that is the best compliment anybody has ever given me in my whole entire life. I appreciate uh, I that so much. I feel like I'm on Nardwar right now. <laughs> Are we going to do the thing at the end? The- we can if you want to. Um, that came from... You're going to stump me because I don't, first of all, I have the flu, so you might not oh, want to sit sorry. that close. Yeah, I'm like, completely, <laughs> I have no idea. I've never really DJed with the flu like this before, so it was a very, uh, I think I sweat like 100 pounds. Uh, that came from um, the Jay-Z Unplugged album Okay. with the Roots. Because I remember. I just want to that was what he said before they came out. Okay, because I watched the Unplugged like over and over again, and I like couldn't find that part, so it must just it on, be on it the was on, It was on the CD. Oh, okay. audio, yeah. You got me there. Uh, what was the other one I wanted to know? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I love it too. What was it like doing the Dilla project? Because I feel like with Dilla, there's a lot of litigation. So, what was the process like for that? Like getting those beats and stuff like that? 
Well, I mean, that was actually honestly a really simple project. Sometimes the best things are the things that come together really easy and simple and organically. And like, I'm real cool with Busta, and we had done so, we had done some mixtapes, and he wanted to do another one. And I was like, yo, you know, he always would tell me about was Dilla, 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 and like how many songs he did with Dilla that nobody ever heard, and all these. He would tell me all these stories, and I'm just like, dude. We need to just, he, Busta was the first person really utilizing Dilla on a commercial level. So I was like, we should just do a project with all of those, put it out to honor him, get his mom on the cover, I mean on the intro, and uh, you know, to tie it all back in. And uh, it, it just kind of became one of those web classic kind of things that, that really took on a life of its own. So. And then you also worked with Nitty Scott MC. What was it like working with her? Um, I met her through uh, my friend Six Cents, who's a really dope MC and producer in New York, and um, she, she's just dope, you know. She's an awesome female, and uh, she blew up kind of. Cool. She was really good on the um, BET Cipher, which was really awesome. And then, uh, actually, my favorite verse of hers actually wasn't even on that project. It was on the, um, we did this Run DMC project, mm -hmm. and her and Tanya Morgan and Six Cents we did Down with the King, and she killed it. And I remember we played that for DMC, and he, like, loved her verse. And that, that made her day because, you know, like, when a, when a legend likes the song that you would make, it's, it's a good feeling. That's so, so dope. Do you have a favorite mixtape that you've done? Um, no. I mean, I, I, have, I have different favorites for different reasons. Like, uh, the Viva La Hova thing was awesome for me because it took my career to another level. The Adele thing as well. My favorite stuff now is actually like the non hip hop stuff I'm doing. Like I do like these like more indie rock fashion week stuff, and and those, those to me are kind of like a little bit more exciting, a little bit more fun. Who are your favorite artists to work with? Like, cause I know some of them you do without the artists, and some you actually do with the artists. So what what are your favorite artists to work with directly? Um, like it really all depends. I mean. I've done a lot of stuff with the Little Brother guys before they broke up. I'm still cool with them, and they're, they're, they're pretty awesome. I mean, it's just such talented dudes. Uh, what's actually cool about that is, like, that Little Brother mixtape was actually one of my favorite things I ever did also. And then, like, years later, like, Drake always talks about how he, like, like uh, listen to that. And it's always, you know, it's cool. Like, you know, and through that, I was able to build a relationship with him. It's just, like, it's just weird how all these little things all, all connect, you know? Only we can get that Drake thing to happen, but it's good. <laughs> yeah, I think Fonte waiting on a Drake song to happen too. Yeah. One day. Yeah, that's what it was supposed to go down. And then when you do DJ sets like this, what's your favorite song to play? I can't answer that. It all depends. Did on you have it. a favorite song tonight? It was cool playing some of the new bass stuff that's like really popular out here that I don't really ever play or even really know that much because I don't live out here. Mm -hmm. So. You know, when you come to a city, you try to do your research real quick and see what's big. And, you know, David was like, yo, you need this, 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 this. And I'm like, I, you know, heard of these records, but maybe I didn't have them on. I didn't. So I spent some time today doing my research. And uh, it's cool when you drop something, you see people just react crazy. And you're like, oh, this is dope. And then you realize you can't play it anywhere else in the world. <laughs> but you're like, maybe you can. And maybe, you know, maybe I can find a way to incorporate that stuff in some other places because, you know, it, it's, it's rocking so well here. So that's cool. The Michael Jackson went off. The Jackson Five went off really well. They were feeling that. That you gotta you gotta throw in some other stuff, you know. I I can't stay on the same path for two hours. It's like it, uh, that's not fun to me. <laughs> Last one. Have you ever thought about doing a Neptune side B? Um, what do you mean you mean like rarities and remixes and type stuff for the Neptunes? I have not. But I will tell you that. Um, I did that one for the Tribe Called Quest one, mm -hmm. which turned out really well, I think, and it did really well, and people really seemed to like it. And I think I'm going to do, and um, I don't know the name of it yet, but because the Beastie Boys are getting honored into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, so. I'm going to do a Beastie Boys similar to the Tribe one, just like to, you know, when they get inducted, just put it out around that time. I think that would be awesome, because they, so, they have such an amazing catalog. Hell the yeah. Neptunes thing is a great idea, too. Like, one day I might do that, too. That's, I might steal that idea. I love when you do the Neptune sets. Those are my favorite. Like, the Pharrell tape is my hands-down favorite. Like, when I'm in a bad mood, type in Pharrell in the iTunes, that one pops up, and my I just let it play. The same thing. It's nice. like her getting ready to go out tape. Yes. Maybe, you know, yes. when we're getting ready to go somewhere, she puts that on and puts her in a good mood.
special Sunday's radio show is live every Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. on ksfs.sfsu.edu. And for everything special, check out specialsundays.com.